What's up? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast. Are you trying to just live a better life, maybe be a better person, find ways that you can improve yourself, improve the world around you? Well, you're in luck. Today, we're going to talk about how to practice Stoicism in daily life. I'm Ra- uh, Danny. I'm here with my buddy Randy. What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. <laughs> how good is it? <laughs> my uh, mouth is ahead of my brain. Oh, good. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be a good one. I yeah, it'll now. be good. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's just keep yep. going. All right. So actually, yeah, so- I have been I have been looking for how to practice stoicism in my daily life. Because you know why? Because I've read a couple of books on stoicism, listened to a couple of podcasts on stoicism. And especially when stuff's going bad, these stoic principles sound pretty darn awesome. They are good. And you know what's funny? Like, I think this is true with like philosophy in general. Like, you know, these... People have been thinking about this stuff all the time, but it's like not always easy to put into practice when you're reading the books. Or it's not always clear how you're supposed to. Like, you know, when the Taoists say, like, you know, like, don't go against the, you know, natural course of the universe. Like, what does that mean? You know, I mean, it's like hard sometimes to know. So it is helpful to kind of get like key points, I think, and think about how do I actually implement this and what does it look like? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up because we're actually going to go over an article that has a few points and then Ooh. we're going to give our own perspective on this whole shebang. Yeah. So let's look at it. How to practice those in daily life. Uh, we'll put this article in the show notes. I'll start with the first one. Develop an internal locus of control. And they give the quote from Epictetus, man is disturbed not by things, by the views he takes of them, which is like a really good point, right? I mean, you know, our world is literally a construct of how we interpret it. So what are we disturbed by if not our thoughts, feelings, and interpretation of things rather than actually the things themselves? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I I was reading some. Oh, there, okay. So I was reading this book called Healing Back Pain, and it was talking about these guys who, in one of the giant wars that happened, it was either World War Two or Vietnam or something like that. They actually like once they got maimed, they got injured and taken out of war. They didn't even need any pain medications for it. They got their leg blown off or something like that. Didn't even need any pain medication. It's like what? how is that even? <laughs> yeah, how is that even possible? And because most of us would be like, that would, that would ruin my life if I was crippled. You know, that would be the end of everything. I would just off myself. And it's like, well, in these people's worlds, they were every day going out into this very, very scary situation where they never knew if they were going to live or die. And then as soon as they were injured to where they couldn't fight, all of a sudden that burden's gone. Like all the difficulties oh, yeah. pretty much gone. They can They can breathe easy for the first time in months or years, however long it was. And they saw this in a whole bunch of people during these wars and it's it's very shocking but it does it comes down to not exactly what happened to them because you take another person who has their leg blown off and that's the end of their life but it's their interpretation of it one person it ruined their life the other person it saved them from a world of misery that's crazy too because when you think about it like you know the anxiety the stress the fear every day doing that probably you're also probably hungry sore i mean anyway all the time so it's like that happens it's like just a totally different way of looking at things right it's like that's but it's a good point though i think this is you know this is it like and i think in order to actually incorporate this into your life it takes time and practice to identify first of all what you're feeling what's going on and then remind yourself that it's just an interpretation it's just a way of looking at things like you know it's funny like most of us people fear death but we also see death all the time around us it's part of life so it's like, why do we fear? Well, we fear because of unknown, right? We fear because of our imagination of it. It has nothing to do with actually dying. <laughs> it has to do with like mm-hmm. kind of what we think will happen. So it's really, I think, you know, thinking about this or like, you know, anger and stuff like that, just recognizing it and remembering like, you know, this is a way I'm kind of prompted to respond to the world. I don't have to respond this way. I can look at it differently. I can see things differently. I can be empathetic and it makes it easier to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many good points there that I want to touch on, but we only have so much time in this episode today. So one thing that I did want to say <laughs> was uh, there was uh, Byron Katie who wrote Loving What Is. She said something along the lines of, when I believe my thoughts, I suffer. When I don't believe them, I don't suffer. And it's like, so like, no matter what happens to you, it's your thoughts about that that cause the suffering. Oh, yeah. And so when you believe those thoughts, true or not, that causes suffering. If you don't believe those thoughts, if you just recognize their thoughts, they may not be true. And there goes the suffering. Dude, how many times? 
have you thought something was impossible, got really stressed or worried about something, and then you actually are forced to do it finally, and it's like easy and the weight's lifted off. Like I'm you thinking mean like, just you know, today? Because that's yeah, probably right. like at least a handful. <laughs> <laughs> this morning 15 times no but you know like so many things in my life i can point back to just dealing with student loans i thought it was gonna be possible at first i was stressed i didn't want to answer phone calls i was scared of the mail then you deal with it and you realize it's possible to take care of there's always ways around things there's always ways to deal with them slowly and it's like it's so funny because our imagination just throws us off completely you know yeah and then the other thing about this is just like the dichotomy of control because i think this is what they were pointing out a bit yeah. with this yeah which is like you need to just focus on the things that are within your control. Like anything that's anything that you don't have an influence on, let it go. Like, oh my gosh, I was I was on vacation not long ago and I saw this guy I was staying at one of these budget hotels and it had free breakfast. And so like every day for breakfast started at like six in the morning. Every day, free breakfast. He loaded up his plate with the breakfast and then he was sitting right in front of that. TV with the news on just downloading that garbage into his brain yeah. and the other garbage into his mouth 6 a.m first thing in the morning i was like man that is a terrible way to start your day but he yeah. was like going to it and it's like all that stuff that he's watching completely out of his control doesn't have yeah. any control over it whatsoever but guaranteed is going to impact him but what's within his control is does he sit down and watch that does he do that first thing in the morning? You know, these are all choices you're making. And I think that's the important thing. It's like the way you look at the world, the way you respond to things, that's in your control. So you have to think about like, what choices am I making and how are they impacting how I'm feeling? If social media is stressing me out, you don't have to look at it. <laughs> There's no reason to, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. that's just, but you have to be mindful of that. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll give the second one. We'll go all back right. and forth. Uh, the second one is guard your time. And the quote is from Seneca. It says, we're tight-fisted with property and money, yet think too little of wasting time, the one thing about which we should all be toughest misers. I like this one a lot. Yeah, we're we're only given, you know, the amount of time that we have on this earth. Money, property, those things can come and go. Time, only a little bit. Marcus Aurelius said, stop living like you got 10,000 years to live. Yeah. Because we're all going to die before we you have know it. We have one chance we're all going to die. And the funny thing is we're also also prone to take things for granted or to think what we're doing so important and we fail to see the rest of the important things in our lives and the things that might enrich us. We focus on money. We focus on wealth. We focus on situation. Instead of looking at like, what can I actually do? What's actually really important to me? What actually makes my life valuable? You know, we don't even know these things because we don't even ask the questions. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one area that I've been doing a lot of work on recently uh, in, in two ways. So one is just saying no to opportunities, to people, to things like that, because I had a hard, I still have a hard time doing it. But like, now I, now I, at least I'm aware I have a hard time doing it. So I can just be like, I need to just say no. Uh, and then I'm like, how can I say no without lying? You know, that's, <laughs> that's the next step that I'm at. So like, that's one part of it. Uh, and then the other part is just, I think it's like not getting, detaching myself from people and situations that are not good for me because like yeah. I was always like, well, you know, doing these things that I didn't want to do, going these places I didn't want to go, being around people I didn't want to go. I was like, yeah, but I'm really just, you know, it's just a few hours. It's just a day. It's just this. And then I'm yeah. like, you know, I don't know if I have five days or five years or 50 years or more, you know, yeah. but it's like, do I want to waste my time doing it with that person, that situation, that thing I don't want to be doing? Nah, not really. Especially when I have the choice uncomfortable as I may be making that choice I still yeah. have that choice well that's what you gotta remember right is you have it's it's your choice right and I think I've seen so many people miserable at their jobs and they're like well you know you can't change it now or whatever and it's like at least I have a job and it's like well no because you're still going there every day you're giving them your time you know you could be doing that time doing something you really like you could be happy you know there's so many other things you could do so really it's your choice you have to really keep that in mind and I think you're right saying no is a great way to start exercising that responsibility over your time and keeping in mind of the value of it. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I like that. Should we do number three? Let's. All right. This one's interesting too. Don't outsource your happiness. And they actually have a quote from Marcus Aurelius, which is, I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinions of himself than on the opinions of others. It's a really interesting one. 
What do you take yeah. from it? Let you start. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of this Dave Ramsey quote, how we spend all our time working these jobs we can't stand to get money, to buy things, to impress people we don't even like. <laughs> it's just like, you know, cut out the middleman. Stop doing what you don't want to do. Stop trying to impress people you don't like. You know, just focus on you. Yeah, it's the truth, though. I mean, we are. Most people are more worried about the opinions of others. They're worried about like what society thinks, what people on Instagram that they don't even know think, you know, rather than like, what do you actually think? What it actually matters to you? Is this even important to you? You know, yeah, would one you of the best things one of the Go best ahead. things I ever heard is your opinion to me is none of my business. Yeah. And it's like, it's and the then, truth, though. Yeah. And then also, OK, so here's another thing. I read this book by I think it was like Dr. John Gottlieb, who's like a relation up a relationship psychologist. And he he wrote this book. It was called like the man's book to women, where basically they locked these couple. They didn't lock them up. They had like a romantic retreat for couples and they just monitored couples over weekends for like years and years and years and took all this data. And this guy with I think it's like 97 percent accuracy. He can determine if a couple's going to break up within six years. Oh, I heard about this, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah. I know what you're talking about. yeah. So like okay. one of the top things that he said in there is uh, her her emotions, her feelings are none of your responsibility. How she feels, not your responsibility, because like and I again, if there are any women who actually listen to this show, they're probably they may not like this, but like women very uh very a lot of their emotions everything dictated by hormones so they're two different people different times of the month and what they're going to be feeling what they're going to be doing a lot of that's going to be dictated by hormones going on and so in the book he says how she how she's feeling is none of your business it's not your responsibility and i was like really because like i look back on my own relationships how like i made it my business if she was feeling miserable or sad or whatever i was like that's my problem but he was like no no we well, you know that's a good point too. Though is also uh, trying to remind people that you don't have to fix things. Sometimes you just have to listen, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I think that's a problem that I've always ran into, where you know, you hear somebody's problem, and because it's somebody close to you, you want to fix it. But really, that's not what they need. That's not Danny, because it's you not... should have written that book because that's pretty much what he said. He was like, yeah. hold her hand and listen to her. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is, right? Because that's all. He, I mean, everybody runs in that. You just want validation. Right? On mm-hmm. a side note, too, I think a quick, a good thing too to ask yourself. I think. uh, I meant to say this before, but like on counterfactuals, like ask yourself, like, would I have done the same thing if that person thought differently of me? Would I have done the same thing if I didn't think I had those obligations? You know, that's a good way to ask yourself, like, what would I have really done in this circumstance if these pressures that I can perceive as being important weren't around? And mm-hmm. then see what you would really do. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. And also, uh, like the self-compassion thing we've talked about, because yeah. like this with don't outsource your happiness. So I look at this like, you're not feeling great. You want to be happy. You're not. Well, like, you know, you're suffering. That's life. It happens. Lots of people suffer. That's life. How can you be kindest to yourself at this moment and not relying on some external thing to give you happiness? Like I've, I've had times in my life where I thought external things dictated my happiness. I thought I needed to be in a relationship to be happy. I thought I needed a certain amount of money to be happy. I thought I needed a certain job or status. New or whatever things to go be buy happy. stuff, right. To be happy or yeah. something like, yeah. yeah. But it's not because it's something that exists within you. And if you're skillful, it's something you can access pretty much regularly. Yeah, which is awesome. Just takes time and work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four, stay focused when confronted with distractions. Another quote by Seneca, if a person doesn't know to which port they sail, no wind is favorable. Let's go into it. Yeah, that's kind of like the Cheshire cat quote that we were yeah. talking about in the last episode. But yeah, staying focused is that a stoic thing? Maybe, but I think I it think is it, important to stay focused. Absolutely, it absolutely is a stoic thing too. Because stoicism, I mean, they believe that, like you know, basically the path to the flourishing life or the good life is through development of virtue and good character. And so, staying mm-hmm. focused on that is central for them for the good life, right? So that like there's a million distractions. Effort, yeah. Yeah, there's a million distractions in the world, right? You know, you're going to run into all kinds of things, all kinds of problems, all kinds of like temptations, all kinds of, you know, emotions and staying focused on what's really important is central. If you want to get to that goal, you want to have that good life for them. That's going to be virtue and building that character, you know, and in other contexts, it might be different. Depends on what you're doing. Yeah, it really is. It really is important to kind of define your values and figure out what's important to you and then (laughs) stick to that. Because I find oftentimes I get distracted 
when I'm not paying close enough attention to what's important to me. Like I forget that, you know, it happened, it happened this past year where like, I'm starting to live more of a situation as to like, this was what I had planned to do from years ago. And I got to a point where I just got distracted because I forgot that, you know, everything that I've been doing has led me up until here. I was just like, oh, I'm trying to do 64 different things at the same time. And they're not all progressing as fast as they should. My life is in shambles. And then, you know, it took me a while to step back and be like, hang on. Like, this is what's important to me. These are the things that I'm doing. This is where I am. Let's take it day by day. And it really helped with staying focused. But yeah, I think this is a good point, too, for stoicism, which is like, you know, and this is why I think stoicism is great in practice. It's just something you have to remind yourself over and over again. And they knew it. You go back to Marcus Aurelius, his journals, it's repetitive as hell because he was going back to these problems over and over because he's a human being. And I think for most of us, that's true. And this is another great point. Like, we're going to get distracted. Problems are going to arise. Things are going to happen. But you got to bring yourself back to those core values of what's important. And then you'll be back on track. And as long as you keep reminding yourself of that, you don't get too off course. You can always pull yourself back. You're not in a place where you fall, life falls apart, you know? And I think that's, yeah, that's a crucial thing. Should we do number five? Yeah, that's this is a good one, too. I like, toss away ego and vanity. And they have a quote from Epictetus. Throw out your conceited opinions, for it is impossible for a person to begin to learn what he thinks he already knows. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you know it all, you can't learn anything. No, you have to humble yourself, right? You have to get rid of your ego and your vanity in order to do anything well and be successful at anything, I think. You know, it's funny, like, most of our fears and stuff, I think, are tied to opinions and tied to beliefs we think we already know. But when you really go out and try to learn these things, you realize now the world's different than you thought it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, like the, they say that the world, that the smartest man in Athens or whatever, all he ever knew was that he didn't know anything. Socrates. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, it, I, I think it would be interesting to go back and meet Socrates to see if he actually lives up to everyone's like expectations. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Play a <laughs> depiction of him. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it it is interesting because every once in a while I'll end up in like this group where it's basically just like a big pissing contest. Everybody wants to see who's like big or bad. And it's just like I generally in social interactions, I don't really talk too much. So like I just listen to other people and then judge them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so but it's funny because it's like one dude will talk about this thing and then the next guy will one up that and the next guy will yeah. one up that and then one dude will just like go way the freak overboard just like you know clearly lying and whatever but yeah it's just like i don't know but you know what what's funny get... though? because there's no winners in it either but you know it's funny though when you see people doing that all i ever think is insecurity hmm. like you're so insecure with yourself you feel like you know people you're sensibly friends with you have to one up in order to be validated like, that's it's funny. Like, think about it. Like, if you're secure with yourself, if you're secure with, like, you can be humbled. You can get rid of your ego and vanity because it doesn't matter. It's not, you don't lose anything. You're fine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. essential to this, too. Just being comfortable with yourself, with who you mm -hmm. are and what matters to you. Yeah. 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 It's so yeah. funny when people get in pissing contests like that. It cracks me up. <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, you know, listening to Marcus Aurelius meditations. I never actually read the book. I've only listened to it a bunch. But uh, it is something where he, many times in there, he's like, thank goodness that I was able to live not like I lived a life of luxury. Like, I, you know, he's like, it's possible to live in a palace and still live kind of a, a stoic life. Yeah. yeah. Dude, he still went on. I mean, if you look at his life, he was a Roman. I mean, he had everything. He was the emperor. He was like the king of kings of that empire. A very good point in the empire, you know. But he went on the front lines with his with his guys in the military. Like he went in battle. He said he put himself at risk. He also didn't dress super fancy all the time. I mean, you know, yeah, he's sure he had some nicer things and all because of his status, but he still humbled himself all the time. And I think that's important. And you see that reflected again in his journals when you read them or listen to them. His own concerns, you see them like come up again and again and his own concern for others and stuff. And you really do see like not an ego that you would expect in someone like that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is it my next one? Yeah, you're number me. six. <clears throat> Ooh, consolidate your thoughts in writing. Again, Seneca. I guess every other quote is going to be Seneca. Uh, <laughs> no man was ever wise by chance. Well, true. 
I like this one, consolidate your, your thoughts in writing, because, you know, back when I was a teenager writing Dear Journal uh, in my little 21 Jump Street locked uh, diary, nice. uh, <laughs> little did I know. <laughs> yeah, but actually, it's it's crazy because there's so many benefits to writing stuff down. I mean, you can consolidate your thoughts, but also you can work through difficult thoughts. You can keep important things in there. Like I can't even tell you how many things that I've found in places I've written down. And now I've kind of compiled that into a few pages that are just like the best stuff that I've experienced in my life. And I just can read through these pages and get for that from a regular basis. Yeah. No, I've always been thankful that like, that was something, I don't know why, I guess it was just a pulse to do it. But like, I started using journals like when I was like really young and it's just something I've always done and it's really helpful. And as I got older, I use them for, I think, more specific purposes, like, you know, goals or working through problems and stuff like that. But they're just great because like writing it down does, it gets it out in the world. It makes it something that's not just in your head. It makes it a lot easier to reflect on ideas, to reflect on problems, to get clear about what you're doing. I think there's so many values to it. So it is important. Yeah actually doing it so you mm -hmm. do number seven let's see. stand your ground i guess i'm getting all the different quotes from different people yeah so, the <laughs> this next one from, will definitely be seneca yeah this is okay <laughs> in doing nothing men learn to do evil this is an interesting Ooh. one because you know like i think uh what was it aristotle said you know like you you can't be virtuous while you sleep right in other words like you know if you're just doing nothing, are you really doing the right thing? Are you really actually exercising virtue or are you just not really participating? I think this is an important one to think about when you think about like character development or just like living life, you know, like what is your values and what are your sort of what's important to you? And are you actually living up to that? Are you actually that person? And I think that's what I get from standing your ground. Like, are you actually like being the person that you want to be that is a good person or are you caving to opinions, other ideas, pressure, whatever? Hmm. That is an interesting one. I mean, there's that quote, the, uh, the idle hands are the devil's playground or whatever that is. Yeah, uh, that's close. <laughs> but there's also all a man's problems come from his inability to sit still and do nothing. So you have both sides of that. What I got from that stand your ground thing was I heard something, I think from one of these books that I read often, but it was talking about how when you have when you have like an insurmountable obstacle come up, something that you just can't get around over or whatever, you just stand your ground and you let it break over you. Because if you stand your ground, there's no place else it can go than to break over you. And that's the thing me personally fear the most. When there's just something that's like, in my mind, unbearable, I'm like, there's no freaking way. I can't endure this. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you just have to endure it. And eventually you get through it and you can look back and be like, yeah, you just had to endure it. But it's like, standing your ground in those moments that's what i think of when i think of stoics like that's what i think of in terms of just standing your ground and whatever crap life hands you you just let it break over you and you and you remain standing yeah taking responsibility for yourself and you take responsibility for you know what you're responding to and how you respond i think that's a really good way to look at it as well so yeah it's two nice ways to actually interpret that let's see if is it seneca next <laughs> seneca how about who who would have guessed He's all the even uh, numbers. I know, right? Imagine the worst that could happen. Ooh, a good nothing one. happens to the wise man against his expectations. Well, that's not exactly true, Seneca. Sometimes life can smack you upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me a few times. But I think it's really important to imagine the worst that could happen. Uh, Tim Ferriss had an exercise of this in this, uh, in uh, what was it, the four hour work week, where he's basically like, write down your worst fears and you know, just go down that rabbit hole, write it all down and see what it would like. And and then once you write down the worst of all fears and the worst possible scenario, you write down how you can recover from that. Yeah. And it turned out like I had this I had this very vague, like very worst fear that like if this happens, my life's over and it paralyzed me for a while. Like I did not know what to do. But then I wrote it down and I was like, yeah, that sucks. And then I was yeah. like, well, what could I do? And then, once I saw that I could do stuff from it, I was like, you know what? That's really not that bad. Like my worst fear was like going to prison, living on the street, yeah. not having money, not having food, having everybody hate me. And then it was like, what could I do? Well, I could go to the library and read. And I was just like, hang on. Worst <laughs> case scenario in my life, I get to go read. This is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> There's all, well, that's just it. There's always a way forward. Right. And I think, but this is, you, you hit the nail on the head when you say like, you know, 
I think most of us have that problem where we have this, it's a vague fear. My life will end. It'll fall apart. Well, what does that mean? Get clear about that. Actually write down what the hell you're thinking when that's the case. What is that worst case scenario? And then how can you overcome it? Because you can still overcome it. And once you get past that fear, there's really nothing to worry about. Like, you know, it's like people get afraid of that all the time when they're doing projects. It's like, oh, what if it doesn't? Well, you can fix it. If it doesn't work that time, you can keep working on it. Whatever. There's always a way around that problem. So I think this is a really good one. Um, they also talk about this. Things he just talks about like that negative visualization, visualizing, visualizing the problem happening 10 times, a thousand times. And it's like also not really that bad, too. You know, like something bad happens to you one day, like you're your shirt gets ripped or something. It's like, if you imagine that happening a thousand times, it's like, okay, this just happens to this shirt, whatever, you know, you move on. It's just a, this is a normal occurrence now. So I think it's another way to, to, to think about that. One. Yeah. 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 And eventually, I mean, eventually you're going to die. So no matter how bad things get, eventually it's going to end. Yeah. Well, hold that thought. Let's do the last one. Cause that's relevant. All right. Yeah. Oh. Marcus Aurelius. Boom. Remember that nothing indoors. And Marcus Aurelius says, Alexander the Great and his mule driver both died, and the same thing happened to both. I like that. That's a good one. Mm. <laughs> did they did they get really big statues of both of them made? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, like, think, hey. And this is Alexander the Great. And, and this, this is his mule driver. driver. <laughs> no, you know, it, it is good that it like nothing does endure. Like we all get so caught up in, you know, worrying about like the future, what's going to happen, all this. But the end of the day is like, you know, when you die, you're dead. That's it. And it's hard to think about, but it's true. Like, you know, all the money, all this shit you have, you don't take it with you. You can try to, but it's not going to go anywhere with you. You know, it's the same thing's going to happen to that. As you, and all these things we stress about, well, guess what? They'll end one day too, just like our lives. And I think keeping that in mind is a very stoic way of thinking because it helps you just keep in mind the reality of life and not getting caught up, I think. In, and then just the acceptance of that part of it mm -hmm. yeah like all these people that were referencing seneca dead epicurus or Ep epictetus dead marcus Ep aurelius dead epicurus is also dead, dead. <laughs> yeah <laughs> They're all dead. yeah all of them dead and yeah so it's, it's kind of like no matter what happens you're gonna die but you have this briefest moment this briefest of moments to actually live and i like uh zorba the greek there's a book and a movie because he's like, sometimes you just need to undo your belt and live a little bit, you know? And yeah. it's just like, I, I, sometimes I noticed in my own life that sometimes I'm so afraid of dying, I don't actually live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you remember that, but I think like, remind yourself that nothing doors can motivate you then to live. Because you also remember that you have a short amount of time, right? This gets back to the other one as well. And I think that can be helpful too. And also too, like our fears and stuff, they don't endure either everything will pass it's like everything is momentary it's not it's not forever but we always think of it as being that way life feelings emotions problems we think of them as just being forever when they're not they're going to change mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so that's that's these recommendations for how to live a stoic life i'm curious danny do you have other things do you think of when you think of how to live a stoic life on a daily life i mean i think so, i mentioned earlier i think central to stoicism was virtue right so building character and i think you know if you're really going to live a stoic life i think part of that has to be i mean whether you want to interpret it as their virtues or your own i think there's nothing wrong with that but i think you know really thinking about your character and what character development means is essential to to stoicism so thinking about you know how can i be a good person what does that look like um why is it important and you know why is that connected to happiness thinking about that for yourself is a really good way to start thinking about stoicism in practice hmm yeah, that's a great one. Uh, I think that for Stoicism, I just like that stand your ground thing. Like that, when when I think of Stoicism, <laughs> that's what I think of. Because it's just like, you're just going to bear the uncomfortableness of life. Because there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. And when there are ups, you think it lasts forever. And when there are downs, you also think it lasts forever. And I think it's just kind of grinning and bearing it, especially the bad stuff, but realizing that it builds character. Well, I think that's part of it, right, is that if you have the character there, if you, if you have a good inner core, those ups and downs aren't going to affect you as much either. You're going to have more balance dealing with that. You're not going to get you're not going to fly off the handle with anger. You're not going to, you know, get totally taken away by pleasure. Right. You're going to have a center. And I think that's also essential to stoicism and practicing is finding that balance, that center. 
Dude, and I mean, it's also, again, I mentioned this in the last episode, but like putting it all in perspective. So like we idolize oh, yeah. these people like Marcus Aurelius, Socrates, all these different things. Dude, Socrates had a wife that was a nag. Okay. Marcus Aurelius, his son destroyed the Roman Empire. So like yeah. everybody that, <laughs> you know, everybody that we idolize, they also were pretty messed up too. So if you, if you're messed up, welcome, you're, you're in good company. You're a human being, right? And I think that's part of it too. Like, you know, you gotta remember, st- some of the Stoics were slaves originally. I mean, you know, they were just trying to live a good life. So I think that's the other thing to human beings. It happens. Like, you know, there's going to be stuff we face and it's just trying to live a good life the best we can. And I think, so that's why I think Stoicism is also very accessible by everyone because it, they were normal people. Some of them were really high up in society. Some of them were very low, but they all became great by doing, you know, leading a great life, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Do you have anything else? All right. So there yep. you have it then. How to put uh, practice stoicism in daily life. Uh, we'll be back later this week with a quick fix. Check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Please like, share, subscribe. It'll help us out a lot. Until next time, later, Andy. Later, Danny.